Hello and welcome to episode 8 of Exploring Joomla 3.x. Uh, in our last uh, episode, we uh, created a minimalist uh, module for Joomla. Okay, and uh, it's a module and it installs, but uh, it's really kind of incomplete, uh, even for a minimal module. So, um, to give you some examples, when we created it, we didn't give any consideration to um, uh, any any security. Okay, for example, when we created it, uh, we didn't include an index.html file. Now, the reason why you want to do that is uh, uh, Apache or most web servers, by default, if they can't find one of their default files to load, will display. A list of the uh, directory and to demonstrate that if we go to joom.dev right and remember our module sits in modules right and our module is mod mine was called mod smallest and if I hit enter here whoa looky here I get uh, a list of all the files that are in there and I guess a hacker could probably use that against us in some way so we need to prevent that and the other thing that uh, can happen is uh, if they know that well there's mod smallest PHP well let's let's run that and look we look we get welcome to my module so um, the the web server is executing that script and sending the results back to the user so we don't really want uh, the modules to execute or any extension as far as that goes to execute outside the uh, Joomla uh, environment and the other thing that uh, we really didn't talk about um, is that on the back end, if we log into the back end, I think I, mine is admin admin on my development machine here. And if we go to extensions, manage, manage, okay, and I want to manage a module, so I'm going to filter these down here a little bit, okay, and mine's called uh, smallest module. Um, right here. So if we look here we see that there's no version, there's an unknown date, unknown author. Uh, when I hover over it, well, I get the name but there should be a description there. So th this information is uh, filled in by metadata in the XML file. So uh, let's, uh, let's start there. Let's um, open up uh, your modules XML or manifest file. I'm just going to open mine with gedit and let's take a look here. So we have uh, name and then the files that we were included. Okay, we're going to add uh, some information here below name and uh, these are metadata fields. Now the metadata fields aren't strictly required but um, they are used in various parts of uh, Joomla to display information on the back end and some of it is used for uh, just for uh, an end user wanting to know um, maybe how to get support or, or who wrote it or that sort of thing. So let's start with uh, author. So we'll put in the um, author tag. Now the author is of course the person who wrote the uh, script. It could be a person, it could be a company. Well, I'm going to put my name in here, Joe Hildreth. Okay, you can put your name, uh, put um, your company's name. You get the idea. But author is populated on the back end, underneath here. So whatever we put in that field will show up here in this author column. Okay. Now the next metadata field that we're going to enter is uh, the creation date. So creation date. See that? I forgot to open that tag. And creation date. Now this is the date that um, your extension was released or that you wrote it or, or whatever. And the date format can take any date format that you like. So I'm going to use today's date, which I think is, well, what is today? Today is July 1st. So I'm going to put in 1 July uh, 2016. That's the uh, uh, format that I'm going to use. Actually, let's uh, let's do this like this. All right. 
So that's format I'm going to use. I could have used July 1st. I could have used just July 2016. I could have used 2016-07-01 if I want to use a MySQL date string or something like that. But it doesn't matter. Um, this uh, date can be laid out in any format you like. But the creation date will be found in the back end under date. So the 1JUL2016 that I put in will be found here so, I'm, so that the end user knows the date that the extension was released. Okay, The next um, metadata field I'm going to use is copyright. Now this is the copyright of the extension. Uh, if you're a private company, it might be copyrighted by your company or or whatever. I'm just going to put in uh, oh copyright uh, 2016 uh, Joe Hildreth. Um, oops. All rights reserved. Reserved. I told you guys I'm uh, not a, not a good programmer and I'm a horrible typist. So you're going to have to deal with me if uh, if uh, if you get any value out of these things. All right. So the next um, or so the copyright um, is mostly for the end user who might open up and look at your XML file because I have not found anywhere in Joomla that it's actually used other than it's stored in the database. Um, the next line um, uh, that we're going to use metadata is the license. Now this would be the license that your application has written under. So I'm going to say the uh, GNU general public license uh, version 2 or later that lets the end user know that uh, this is written under the GNU license and that they can uh, uh, reuse and modify this code as they see fit so and again it's not anywhere visible on the back end of Joomla that I have found but uh, at least it lets the user know what uh, what what they can or can't do with the, your extension. So the next one is the author email. And this would be an email address that uh, an end user could uh, Can contact uh, the, uh, for support or the uh, the creator of the uh, uh, of the extension. So I'm just going to put a fake email address in there, Joe at some domain dot com, uh, and a production um, extension. Obviously, you would put your real email address in there. And again, this is another one that's not displayed on the back end of Joomla, uh, but it, but it's uh, useful for the uh, uh, the person installing your application to have. So the next metadata tag that we're going to enter is author URL. And this would typically be uh, the address that um, uh, an end user could you know go to to get, look for updates or get support or that sort of thing. So I'm just going to put in my email address here. Uh, and again, this is another one of those uh, metadata tags that aren't really seen on the back end of Joomla, uh, although I believe Joomla stores it. Uh, but again, the end user can, you know, it's there to help the end user. And uh, so the next metadata tag that we're going to use is version. Every application should have a version. And uh, since this is the very first one, I'm just going to put uh, 1.0.0. Now, versioning we will go into in more detail. Uh, I'm sorry, more uh, depth in a later video. Uh, the version um, Joomla uses that on the back end. 
and we see that underneath the version column that's where it'll be displayed but also Joomla uses it when it does uh, upgrades to an extension remember we set our method equals upgrade up here which does a couple things if um, the same version of the um, extension exists um, Joomla will overwrite the files which sometimes is better than um, it bailing out saying I can't do it uh, if the version here is greater than the version installed then it will do it will handle updates in a sequential manner but again we'll, we'll talk about versioning and updates uh, later and then the uh, last metadata tag that I want to talk about is description and the description is uh, just the description a small description of your um, of your extension so this is uh, uh, let's say uh, the minimum code example uh, for a module and this is uh, used in the back end when we mouse over um, um, an extension you'll see that uh, it puts up uh, the name of the extension and then a description and that description that we just put in that's where it pulls it from so ours will say smallest module and then underneath that it is say the minimum code example for a module so that uh, that's all the metadata and remember I told you these these aren't required okay um, although uh, I would argue that version probably is and of course we talked about name in the last one uh, this other stuff uh, is it just makes the appearance of the module in the back end more complete and gives information to the end user so those uh, those are those are important uh, at least in my mind to to have a minimum complete uh, module so with that out of the way let's save that and uh, let's address the two security vulnerabilities remember I told you that uh, if we go to uh, the direct path without an index HTML or something to interrupt that the uh, file server will give us a uh, list of files now with that said I, there are ways to prevent file listings uh, in Apache and I guess that uh, uh, Microsoft's internet internet uh, IIS server will do the same thing but we as a, a extension developer have no um, way of knowing how the server is configured so but a simple thing that we can do is uh, include an index HTML file in here because that's a default file that a web server will look for and if somebody types the the path direct it will just uh, load that index file and they'll see nothing so let's do that so to do that we're gonna create a uh, new empty document and we're gonna call it index.html we're gonna open this for edit and we really don't need much in here we just uh, the bare minimum for um, uh, an HTML document is uh, I want to say doc type and the doc document type that we're creating is HTML and then we'll put in a title tag and close the title tag and this is kind of the convention that Joomla uses uh, for their empty HTML documents so that's all we need to do that that was pretty simple so we'll save that now in order for and close this file in order for the index dot html file to be installed in uh, Joomla uh, we have to include it in our manifest remember anything that we send uh, install into the server has to be included in this manifest file so open your mod smallest XML file and let's edit that and then down here we're going to add another file name file name is index.html uh, so then instruct um, Joomla to copy this file up as well and we'll save that so that's pretty much um, all the code that we need to uh, uh, to add here in order to prevent this directory listing now remember we had a second issue where if we put in the name of the module mod smallest PHP it would execute that so how do we fix that well if you recall back when we were talking about 
the uh, execution cycle and looking at this index.php file that Joomla runs that Joomla creates a constant here called underscore jexec and sets it to 1. We can utilize that in our code script to prevent um, our script from being executed. So in other words if, uh, if we look and say hey has this been defined uh, and it has, we know that Joomla is firing off our module and not somebody from the outside world. So let's go over to our mod smallest PHP. This is our entry file and we're going to edit that. And right now we just have, you know, echo welcome to my module. And we're going to add uh, one line. We're going to add defined. Okay. And what we're looking for defined is underscore j exec. Okay. And if it's not defined, we just want to uh, die. We just want to kill the script. So what this uh, line says is that if this constant is defined, then carry on. If it's not defined, die. So it's a, uh, it will just end the script. So we can save that. Now there's nothing else that we have to do with the manifest file because this file, mod smallest PHP, as you recall, is already included in the manifest. So let's check out our work. This is an old archive here, so I'm just going to delete that. And I'm going to take all three of these files here, and I'm going to zip them up into a single archive. Mod smallest is fine. Close. All right, so now let's uh, go to the back end and install. So we'll go to the back end, and we will install. So you can get there from extensions, manage, install and we want to browse and select our extension. Remember we don't have to uninstall uh, the extension because we set our install method to upgrade and if it's the same version it's just going to overwrite the files. So let's upload and install. Installation was successful so let's go and make sure that our module is still published. Okay so there's smallest module we're still published, we're still in position 7 and we're on all pages so that's good so now if we come up here to the front and let's try executing the module again outside of Joomla by running that mod smallest PHP we get nothing at all so if we look at the page source we see that it's, it's empty so the script done its job it looked to see if the J exec was defined and if it was um, it would it well, we'll go get into that. It's not defined because we entered it directly, so it kills the script. Remember the listing issue. Let's see what happens now when we just try to list the contents of the directory. Nothing. So what's what's in here? Let's look at this page source. Ah, so it did in fact give us our blank uh, HTML document, which was what we wanted. So let's go back to the front end of the site and. There's our smallest module, and it's it's uh, obviously getting there uh, through Joomla. So J exec is defined. So we'll execute our code, and there we are. So that's the um, that's probably the holes that I think that should be filled in a basic module. Uh, in the next uh, tutorials, we'll be starting. Um, I'm going to be starting a, a, another module, a whole new module, one that's a little bit more. Uh, useful and that will demonstrate uh, some of the what I consider the model view controller aspects of a module and, and some database stuff and some templates and and a lot so there'll be uh, several probably tutorials to cover all that but we've come a long way and uh, but we have a long a long way to go so but you should have now a firm understanding of how to write a simple module for Joomla uh, and and uh, make it reasonably secure and and build upon that so we're going to expand uh, our knowledge a little more in the upcoming uh, videos. So again, thank you for your time. Thank you for your patience. Um, I do understand I'm, I'm probably not the best person in the world to teach this, but I do want to give back to the community that's given so much to us. So until next time, have a blessed day.